He chewed his jerky, shifted weight, and remained stone-faced through fields, blinded by bugs, protein. He raised the sun and set it in his own damn time, bled it out of east and hammered it into the black horizon, Pacific. There were times not even time could rope him in. Well, chapter three. Helen would wait for him. She had raided her mom's liquor cabinet for the bottle of Jack, and her heart beat for his pain. She wasn't going to tell him not to drink. She spotted him in stride with two brothers at his side at the alcohol abuse center where Bella's friends gathered. They always had. They hung her blood, her sweat, her tears on the walls around the bar. The purple sun setting in green waters, a vine holding kitchen utensils and feasting on its own roots. He spotted Helen when he leaned forward over the table with a triangle to capture the colors on blue felt and the eight ball on the balance. She didn't care that whiskey was on his breath. She was younger than he was, but smart with what she wanted, kept her desires in check. He saw another shot lost and took his hand off the cue and shook his fist before he forgot. But their eyes would meet soon thereafter in the midst of most of his stripes still on the table. It's the poorest game of the night. She stood up to him and said, hi. He made a shoddy effort to smile. Nothing lost, nothing found. And after the game, they sat at the bar where she offered him a napkin to tear and stain with ink if he wanted. Cass laughs, Will wrote. The Romans had her fingered. Antony gave her pleasure. But the empire served no greater purpose than looking upon her on their blind, sandstormed way to Alexandria wounds exacted and held and dressed, a snake on the pharaoh's forehead, the Abyssinian in the sphinx, sand making mortal the mortals, swallowing time itself whole like it came in a kernel. Sand eternal, he wrote. You wear your heart on your sleeve, she said, and the judgment shocked him, but it's really beautiful, Will. He plowed his tangled sea hair with his hands. Damn, tonight I am, I mean, you make my heart bleed. I don't know how. He remembered when he first dated her. They were destined for castles made of sand and chrome caps on wheels and hidden sensual dances behind tinted windows, public displays of love, drinking coconut milk at fruit stands, in the heat, everything was overexposed. They disappeared in the snow of sunlight, known only by the dedicated shadows and the crook of their arms and the hollows at the base of ankles as they walked away arm in arm, song in song. The early days together had been fire. She conquered him the first three times they slept together in a womb of salt water, then sunk in the couch, then in flight over the mattress, trailed by sheets they could not escape. He exposed his soul to her, didn't even have a tan to hide behind this fall. And sexual tension was back between them, but there was no tension when she held him. The love they made, flirting with fate and destiny, stars and signs, was heavens above an easy lay in the dirt of that. She was about sand, not dirt, and he was buried in her, yet still separate. Helen wrote a napkin in response to him. She was born of the Nile, Cass. In the height of their empire, Romans slid down their swords for her. Will had a laugh. Candles melted down to form wax shallows over the bar.